In the last tutorial, I was covering operators and how we can use operators in ActionScript 2. Now, in ActionScript 3, operators are very similar. So I didn't go into any detail explaining the operators, but they are very similar in ActionScript 3. Now, in this movie, what I want to do is I want to continue on with operators and do something else as well. So I have an ActionScript 2 file here. And for this tutorial, we're going to talk about the comparison operators. And I'm also going to introduce if statements. And if statements are the statements that basically allow us to use conditional logic in our games. And so they become very useful. And when we use if statements, we happen to use comparison operators quite a bit. So I thought it would be appropriate. Now, if I open up this tab and we look at our books here of ActionScript code, you can see here if we open up operators, there's the comparison operators, which we're going to talk about today. And the main one we're going to start with is the double equal sign. And the double equal sign will test equality. So it tests equality instead of assigns equality. So this is an important um, fact. So the double equal sign tests equality. In other words, it basically says, is A equal to B? And so it, and that answer could be either true or false. And so we're going to use those in our if statements, right? And the other thing we're going to be talking about, of course, is the if statements. And if we close this book, operators, and we look in statements, and we go to, let's see here, conditions, you can see that the if statement exists right here under statements, under conditions and loops. OK, so let's get started. And once again, this is an ActionScript 2 file that I'm working from. OK, I'll close the books here. And first off, I'm going to set up two variables. So I'll say my num1, and we'll say that it's equal to a number. And we'll make it equal to the number, let's say, 5. All right, and I'll copy this and make the second one, var my num2, also equal to 5. So now we have two variables my num1 and my num2. Now I put the my in front to basically reaffirm that this variable is named a name that I make up myself. I choose the names of my variable. So it's my num1, basically, right? OK. And so now we're going to put this into an if statement. Now an if statement looks like this. You say, start it with if, and then it gets an open and close parentheses, and then an open curly brace, and then an end curly brace. And the way this works is you have um, here, this is the argument between the parentheses. So this is where we basically test. So we say if, and then whatever's in here is tested. And if this test, or if this, you could say, argument is true, then we execute, execute if true. So if this argument turns out to be true, then whatever code is executed here, right, in between the two curly braces, right? And we can put white space in between here, and that's fine. So if this argument is true, execute in here. So we'll set it up right now. So we'll say if my num1 equal equals my num2. And we can have white space between the operator here, or we the comparison operator, the double equal sign, which is going to test equality. It's going to say, is A equal to basically B, right? And we can have white space here, or we can have no white space there. And that's fine also. If my num1 equal equals my num2, then we'll execute if true. And so we'll say trace, and in here we'll put the string true. OK? So there we have it, right? And so in this case, since we have our two variables, will this be true or false? This will be true, because my num1 is equal to the number 5, and my num2 is equal to the number 5. So if we hit Control enter we get an output to the output window up here, as you can see, where it says true. And so that worked. 
Here's our Flash movie. Of course, we have no, no animations in our Flash movie, just the action script that we've put on the first keyframe here on layer one. So let's change that up now. So we'll say, we'll remove that. We'll make that a six and hit Control Enter. And you can see we don't get anything to the output window this time because basically they're not true. My num one does not equal my num two, so we don't get the true statement. So the double equal sign tests for equality. And the if statement, of course, takes an argument which can be true or false and then executes the code if it's true. So let's try another one. Let's try now the test for inequality. And the test for inequality is an exclamation point and then an equal sign. And so this will test for inequality. So in this case, if I change this to an exclamation point and an equal sign. Let me put a space in here so you can see it a little bit easier. So an exclamation point and an equal sign. This is testing for inequality. So it's saying, does A not equal B, right? And if A does not equal B, then the statement or the argument will be true, logically. And so then we will execute. So if I, we hit Control Enter, you can see that the trace statement traces to the output window because it's true. My num1 is equal to 5, my num2 is equal to 6, and they're not equal to each other, so it's true. Now, if I change them back to both equal to the number 5, and we hit Control Enter, you'll see we do not get an output to the output window. So that is a test for inequality. We can also try out some of the other comparison operators. For instance, I've put up here the greater than or equal to operator and the less than or equal to operator. So in this case, if I say if my num1 is greater than or equal to my num2, trace true. So what will happen? Will it trace true? Will this execute? Remember, this will only execute if this condition or this argument is true. And my num1 is actually equal to my num2. So this comparison operator, though, is saying greater than or equal to. So in this case, if we hit Control Enter, you'll see that it traces true to the output window. Now, if I change these numbers and I say my num1 now equals 7, well, my num1 is now greater than or equal to number 2. So we will still get a true to the output window. But if I switch these and I say this is equal to 5 and this is equal to 7, then in this case we have a false condition, right? And the output is not sent to the output window. If we want to get rid of the equal then part of things, we could just say, all right, make both of these 5 again and just test for is A greater than B, or in this case, my num1 greater than my num2. And in this case, it will evaluate to a false because my num1 is equal to 5 and my num2 is equal to 5. So my num1 is not greater than my num2. And so this test is false. So we do not see the output true to the output window. So that is using not only the greater than or equal sign, but also I used the just greater than. And we also can use just the less than.